What's going on guys? Welcome back to Collecting 101. Now our topic today is going to be Black Americana. Now I understand this is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people, but I'm of mind is if you don't remember history, you're bound to repeat it. Now that's why I think these uncomfortable conversations and these terrible uh, advertisings and pictures that I'm going to be showing is something that we always should keep in the back of our mind to know to never treat anybody like this. So, um, you know, and when we talk about Black Americana, it is actually a very collectible category that people like to hold on to. Not only because of the history, but some people just like to get it out of circulation so it's not even around no more, you know. So there's a lot of different ways people like to take Black Americana in. But today, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure I, you know, show you guys the terrible parts of this, but also the great parts when the civil rights era came around that people like to collect a lot of those items as well. So, you know, I want you to keep that in mind too, that, you know, for all the terrible things, there is some good parts of black Americana that people do collect as well. So um, I just, as I said, I did want to preface this by saying, I understand, you know, if you're very uncomfortable with a lot of these things, you know, I understand not continuing with the video, but trust me, I'm going to do this in the most tasteful, you know, best way I possibly can to make sure you guys do learn a lot from this while also, you know, understanding that, you know, this can never happen again. And we should never be, you know, in that, you know, that mindset of, you know, that much hate that was around back then. So, you know, let's uh, get some, you know, the history of this is going to be pretty long. So I want you guys to know that as well, because there's a ton of history uh, to, uh, you know, Black Americana from uh, collecting it to, you know, what was out, you know, the advertising, different, you know, things that were used. So the history part is going to be quite long, but we're also going to start, uh, you know, discuss the actual collecting part of this, which is going to be, you know, the popularity, you know, who are people collecting? What are people collecting? That's something I want to touch on as well. And then of course, we're going to end it with the value, you know, what's the value of Black Americana right now? And, you know, going forward, is it going to be something that's going to be worth collecting? So um, let's get into this, guys, and let's start off with history. Black Americana can be traced all the way back to the 1200s, with items such as jewelry as well as pottery known as blackamoors being used to depict people from Africa. Now, Europeans and North Americans used blackamoors to help reinforce these awful stereotypes on African Americans as well as to help bolster slavery. Now, this trend lasted until the early 20th century when these European colonies started to colonize and trade with people from North Africa. Now, in America, slavery became entrenched in the way of life around here. Representing African Americans in an inhumane way just became the norm. Now, in America, this form of hate was spread through theatrical performances, song lyrics, advertising, imagery, as well as your normal household objects. Now, after the Civil War, racist depictions were marketed with the idea that African Americans were an inferior human race. You started to see items come out like Mammy. Now, Mammy was a mother-like black woman who loves helping her white family she worked for. Now, they made it seem like she was okay with her slavery, which is just absolutely terrible. Now, you also can look at the smiling cook in the cream of wheat ads. Or they also tried to depict African Americans as simple-minded who obsessed over watermelon. Now, characters of black people used as punchlines and advertising for products like ink, uh, toothpaste, shoe polish, house paint, etc., I mean, they were everywhere. There's so many different things out there they tried to use these for to depict these awful uh, images of African Americans at that time. Even as progressive groups began to question the ethics of racial prejudice, often popular depictions of African Americans as subhuman would undermine their efforts. Now, most traits that were being used in these uh, depictions were very dark skin, large red lips, and big bulging eyes. Now, black children were also used for advertising as well. They were called picketing kids. Now, they were often uh, seen as being very dirty, unkempt, and they were barely clothed. In the 1960s, African Americans started pushing for change by creating their own representation, as well as fighting for more equality through marches and protests, amongst many other things. Now, some of the most sought after black Americana was actually during this time period of the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Now, here's a few examples of some of the things people out there looking for. Now, there was comics that depicted the life of Martin Luther King. Uh, there's newspaper clippings of the Rosa Parks trial. There's Malcolm X silver spoons, plates, and ceramic figures. There's tickets for a Josephine Baker performances people are always out there looking for. Uh, signed photos of Muhammad Ali original Duke Ellington records, as well as Jackie Robinson baseball cards. Now, guys, those are just some of the few things during that time period that people always love out there looking for, especially adding to their collection. 
But yeah, guys, that's really the, the history of black Americana, because as the years have gone on from the civil rights movement now, obviously it's, you know, that's something that you don't see anymore on, you know, your advertising, your imagery, you know, it's something that should have been gone long before that. So I hope during this history section, like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, you have to learn from history or you're bound to repeat it. So hopefully everybody learns from this, you know, how many terrible things have happened and, you know, how that should never ever happen to anybody, any color, any race. It's just such a terrible thing to, you know, have in our history. But I think it's something you definitely have to keep there to learn from. I mean, that's just something I believe, you know, has to stay. And that's not even just with that. That's with everything. I think mean, history is history for a reason. So, um, you know, and as we get into the next part of this video about the popularity of black Americana, you know, what people use it for. I mean, some people use it as an investment to the future as because, you know, this stuff ain't coming back. So it ain't something that's going to be created again, you know, minus reproductions, I guess. But, you know, it's something so people hold on to it for a great investment. And some just want it, like I said before at the beginning, they want to just take it out of circulation. They don't want it to be a part of anything. So they take it, they destroy it, they get rid of it. You know, and I, I can, I understand everybody's points. I'm like one of those people that I enjoy hearing everybody's point of view on every subject and I take everything in as much as I can. And that's like what everybody should do. We should all be listening to everybody, you know, taking in everybody's opinions and what everybody has to say and think, and then, you know, formulating your best possible way of life out of that. So, so yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the history part of this video. Now let's get on to the popularity. All right, so let's get into the popularity of Black Americana. Now, I broke this down into four separate categories that if you're going to start collecting Black Americana, you definitely want to write these down and get these out there because these are very collectible pieces that are highly sought after. Now, if you're out there treasure hunting, no, no different. If you're going to resell this stuff, if you get it for the right price, there is a huge market for this right now. So again, if you're out there looking for this, these are definitely some things you want to be looking for. So the first category we're going to talk about is Mammy and Uncle Moses. Now, I talked a little bit about Mammy in the history part of this video, but these two were depicted as house servants, slaves that were happy and content being slaves for their white family. Now, you'll be able to see this uh, in, you know, spice jars or cookie jars, um, salt and pepper shakers, dolls, uh, string holders cast iron figures, amongst many other things they use Mammy for. Now, speaking of Mammy, actually Aunt Jemima is just a modern representation of Mammy. If you looked at both of them, you'd be shocked how close, they're, you know, close they are together. But that was just a modern version of what Mammy was back then. Now, Mammy is someone that we actually sell a lot of in our store. We barely hold on to her because we have a lot of collectors for her. There's a lot of black Americana collectors out there. I mean, because there's you know, just stuff that you don't see nowadays is something that's always sought after, no matter what it is. If it's black Americana amongst, you know, Nazi stuff, it's the same thing. It's just stuff you don't see nowadays. It's stuff that people are always out there looking for. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is the Pikini Kids. Now, we're going to start off, you know, like I said, I talked about this a little bit in the history section of this video, but they are pretty much black children being depicted as dirty, unkempt, barely clothed. Um, the first kind of example of this would be Little Black Sambo. Now, Sambo was being used as another reference for Lazy Servant. So the story of Little Black Sambo is not necessarily racist, but the words and the you know imagery was actually definitely very racist. So again, it's just one of those things that depicted African American children wrong, as you know back then they always did. Um, and now, so a more modern version of that would be like Buckwheat from Little Rascals, who was just a bumbling. Um, bumbling kid, poorly dressed, just another depiction, you know, a way of dehumanizing black people. Now, also something you want to be looking for are with the Pickneys is postcards, pictures, because um, definitely not a lot of black children were pictured back then. So anything you can find with them in a picture, uh, the postcards, you know, obviously there's going to be most, <laughs> most of the time there's going to be racist, you know, stereotypical items for that. But again, something that's very collectible and sought after very much by the Black Americana collectors. Um, and past that, the next topic we're going to talk about is just advertising pieces. Now, I touched base on Aunt Jemima uh, back at the beginning of the part of this popularity section, but she's somebody that's no longer around. So a lot of people are out there trying to collect bottles, uh, posters, boxes, anything with her on it because she's not, a, you know, they've, they've turned into, I think, the Pearl Mills Company, something like that, something Pearl Milling Company or something like that. But um, so Aunt Jemima is not out there no more. So people are out there starting to collect her now because, you know, you're not going to find any more new stuff. So she's somebody you definitely should be out there looking for. Maybe something that's not going to have a ton of value right now, but something that's going to definitely come down the line. I think that's going to have value because, you know, they're not making no more Aunt Jemima items anymore. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is the cream of wheat box. 
There's another example. Uh, and then there's so many other ones, guys. I know I touched a little based on it in history, but they use advertising with black people so much. I mean, just the toothpaste, washing powder, um, house paint. Um, I'm going to show you know four or five more here just of many different ways they use African Americans in a very terrible way to advertise their items. So again, it's just you know a terrible time, but something that's very collectible and people are definitely out there looking for it. Like I said before, something that's not around anymore, people are always going to be out there looking for. And that's just, you know, you can apply that to a lot of things, not just necessarily black Americana, you know, but again, a lot of things out there that people, if you don't find it anymore, you might as well hold on to it. So the last topic we're going to talk about or the last category is going to be the civil rights movement era. Now, these are just some of the few examples that anytime you come across, you should definitely hold on to if you're collecting it or if you're looking to resell, you should be able to get a very good amount of money for. Now, first person, easily Martin Luther King Jr. Anything that, you know, he was around, such a huge figure in the civil rights movement, um, anything that he was around, touched, signed, anything like that is something you should definitely be on the lookout for. Uh, Malcolm X, same exact reasons, you know, anything with, you know, figures, pictures, signed, you know, posters, newspaper, anything like that. It's always something you want to hold on to and always something you should be looking for. Uh, Rosa Parks is another one. Uh, again, like we talked about before, the trial newspaper clippings, anything like that is something that um, is always collectible and people are looking for. Um, then it gets more into the sports figures. I mean, Muhammad Ali, you know, probably, probably the greatest boxer of all time. I was a Mike Tyson fan, but you know, Muhammad Ali, amazing as well. Mike Tyson, probably not. I just enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed the, the 18 second knockouts, but um, Muhammad Ali stuff. I mean, signed items of his, uh, old videos of his, anything like, you know, as it related to him was such a popular figure during that time. And, you know, a huge part of that movement as well. Um, and then again, Jackie Robinson, you know, broke the color barrier. I mean, there's another one too, that is a high, um, highly, you know, sought after baseball card. And again, you guys know me, I'm a huge sports card collector. I don't have any Jackie Robinson baseball cards. I mean, they're hard to come, to, they're hard to come after, hard to come by. So definitely something that uh, people are out there looking for and definitely something people out there collecting. So um, there's so many more items that celebrate black history during that civil rights era that I'm going to show throughout this as well. Um, because, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a earth changing or world changing time right then where, you know, stuff you won't see anymore that's, again, it's something that a lot of people are out there looking for. So, so yeah, guys, that's the popularity section of this video. There's a lot of items in there you should be that, you know, you should definitely be out there looking for. I mean, just to touch on a few more, anything that said like colored people, the white people, I know there's big signs for that as well. That's really popular. I think we talk about a little about that in the value section of this video, but you know, anything using words like that, they just aren't using word like the N word and stuff like that is very, you know, it's, it's a thing that we don't like to talk about, but it's something that's very collectible for that time period and for these items. So, so yeah, guys, that's just a few bits of popularity for the black Americana part. I hope that gave you guys some great ideas to be out there looking for, you know, either for your resale purposes or your collecting purposes. So, all right, guys, let's get into the value section. All right. So let's get into the value of your black Americana. Now, first things first, I always like to talk about condition, but with the fact that we have such a, a wide array of items that could be in there, I'll try to break it down as best as I can. Now, if you're talking about glass, ceramic, uh, porcelain, anything along those lines, it's gonna be no chips, no cracks, no imperfections, no repairs. You know, you want it in the best condition as possible. Now, if you're talking about advertising pieces like boxes or old containers or signs, you want them, again, as complete as possible. You want the writing and all the wording to be seen, uh, as little rust as you possibly can get, uh, no discoloration, all those kind of things. Because, again, you, you want them in the best possible shape. And now, if you're looking at signed items from the Civil Rights era, you're more looking towards getting it authenticated because you want a legit piece. You don't want to get an item that ends up being a fake because there's going to be a lot of fakes out there, a lot of reproductions out there. So make sure you do your research, which is what we're getting into next. How to determine the value of your item. It's three R's, guys. It's research, research, research. <laughs> so much research needs to go in when you get into any kind of collecting. And this is no different. You want to use eBay for your values. You want to use online sources and books to find out, is this an actual item I have? So you're looking at, you know, when was it made? 
where it came from. You want as much information about it as possible because you don't want to get an item that's reproduced. And again, that's another thing. With this kind of popular uh, product like Black Americana, there is a lot of reproductions out there. So when there's a lot of reproductions out there, you really have to know what you're getting into. Because if you don't know what you're getting into, you're going to get duped a lot. And I don't want to see that from you guys. I don't want to see it because I do have an antique talk coming up. That's our next video coming out, which is going to be um, right up there in this corner right here on um, how to identify fakes and reproductions from authentic pieces. So be on the lookout for that. But um, but yeah, so that's kind of something you want to make sure you're, you're, you're doing that research to find out that you don't get something that's not legit. So um, now if we're going to talk about prices of black Americana, again, we're on such an, a, a huge category of items that you're definitely going to, want to use, you know, your research. You're going to want to use eBay. So what I'm going to do is during this time here, I'm going to show, I'm going to show a bunch of sold eBay listings of just common items that are very, you know, common black Americana items that you could be looking for and kind of gives you a little rundown of what it's worth. So, um, you know, because when you get into black Americana, it can be stuff that sells for $5 and it's fairly common, you know, for salt and pepper shakers or, you know, spice jars, or you can get into the thousands of dollars once you start talking about, you know, signs and advertisings and certain things can go for so much money, guys. I mean, this is a big category of items that I'm always out looking for because the value is always there. There's a huge crowd. There's a huge market. So definitely something I want you to make sure you guys keep your eyes out for. And then hopefully I gave you guys enough time to see a bunch of sold listings here to kind of give you a rundown of what these things actually sell for. Now, you guys know this is my favorite part of the video. We're going to talk about the top three most expensive sold items for Black Americana. Now, this is going to be sold listings on eBay. So I'm sure you can look online and probably see some private auctions that stuff have sold for way more than this. And that's all great and dandy, but I wanted to do this so I could show you exactly sold listings out there. You guys can see the items and you know exactly what we're talking about. So there's definitely items that I'm sure have sold for more than this, but these are the top three I've seen on eBay sold listings. So number three today is going to be a large for color patrons only bus sign. Now this sold for over $2,000. I mean, these are very sought after. Like I said, anything saying colored people, whites only, or the N word, stuff like that. Very sought after. A lot of people looking to either collect it or like I told you before, get it out of circulation. Um, number two on our list today is actually a 1920s red capped Porter logo, uh, Porter, I'm sorry, Porter long, long legged uh, Black Americana statue. Now this one sold for over $2,200. And again, a very rare piece that you definitely want to make sure, you know, if you come across it, you want to make sure it's authentic because again, a lot of reproductions out there, but this one right here is the legit piece over $2,000. I mean, an amazing, amazing piece of history. And now number one on the eBay sold listings page was an African-American Civil War pick. Like I talked to you, or picture, like I talked to you guys in the popularity section, the pictures, postcards, very popular, especially anything to do with military is something you always should be out there looking for because these are, again, very collectible, very sought after, and there was not a lot out there. So again, people are definitely going to pay an arm and a leg for them. Now, this one sold for over $2,400 for just one picture. So again, an amazing, amazing piece of history that I definitely uh, would love to come across at some point, but just never have. So, so yeah, guys, that is our Black Americana video today. I really hope you guys learned a lot. I mean, I did doing a research for this. I was just very, uh, very excited to do this video because I, I was... I wanted to learn more and I'm always about learning more because that's the business. Every day I learn something new and this I learned so much on that I can be out there looking for and hopefully you guys did the same. I mean, the history of these items, you know, going from, you know, the 1200s till now, I mean, just absolutely amazing. A lot of popular items you could be out there looking for. I mean, this is a huge collection of items that if you want to get into this, you could have a different array of items all over the place, which makes it even that much more fun to do. Um, then, of course, the value. The value is there. Right now is the time to be buying, selling. Whatever you want to do with this stuff, you can do because it's such a huge market for it that I don't think you're going to have any problem doing one or the other. So, so yeah, guys. That's our video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was in good taste with you guys. I hope I did everything the right way to make you guys understand how passionate I'm about antiques and about just this uh, another category of antiques that I, you know, we deal with. So um, again, thank you guys all so much for watching. Our next week's video, we're going to touch on lunchboxes. So you're looking at the old Aladdin lunchboxes, 1950s, 60s character ones. There's a lot of really cool ones out there I'm excited to talk about next week. So I'm really excited for that video. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you guys get a second, smash that like button and then comment below. What is your guys' history in 
in black Americana collecting. Now I don't want, let's try to keep it clean in the comment sections. I don't want nothing terrible because it will get deleted, any kind of racist or anything remarks, but I really want to touch on just the collecting portion of black Americana, any kind of stories you have, stuff you've come across, um, anything that I missed out on that I should have included, let's talk about it and let's have a great conversation in the comment section because I'm I, I respond to everybody. So let's let's you know generate good conversations in the comment section. And of course, if you get some time and you like the content, let's hit that let's hit that subscribe button. I mean, it's uh, a lot of videos coming out. We got a lot of antique talks, auctions, and more collecting 101 videos coming just about every week. So I'm excited to be back, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you guys know about me, when we talk about collecting, it's always about your memories over money. See you guys later.